Hi, Scissorin here with another video and today we're covering Last Epoch which has its multiplayer launch on the 9th. Very exciting, I'm definitely going to be playing that probably with some friends. And today I'm going to be telling you 6 cool things about Last Epoch for those that aren't familiar with the game. So Last Epoch is an action role playing game similar to Path of Exile and other multiplayer ARPGs like Diablo that you have played in the past. There's a lot of the similar feature, it has skills, items, etc. And I want to cover some cool things that you might be interested in. One thing that's really cool, it has an in-game loot filter that you can access while you're playing. And you can like very easily like temporarily disable something. You can add something really quickly. So you can just be like, okay, for this, I want to recolor. And I want them to look like this. And I want it to be everything that's like really you know a set item exalted items things like that or specific mods and items that you're looking for so what if i'm looking for like anything with summons then i can just easily like change that click add and it'll go into my filter and it's so easy to fix and and do on the fly last epoch doesn't really have as much as like you know in path of exile we have never sync Never thinks like a general filter that most players would use because it's too convoluted and complicated to make your own. That's not really needed in this. I've never downloaded somebody else's filter. I just make my own filter on the fly and I'm like, oh, I need to check out for these. I need this for later. And your filter just evolves over time. It's really, really interesting. And you can have a lot of things be the same color, different colors and make it exactly what you want. I've never ever felt like I'm like needing a filter in the start either because not enough things are dropping. Now, Last Epoch has more deterministic crafting than Path of Exile. Now, it also has some really interesting things. So first, let me tell you a little bit about the items. It has two prefixes and two suffixes, and there is some special stuff you can do to get a fifth. Also, you have um, drop-only prefixes and suffixes. So this can go tier 6 or tier 7. They're called Exalted. This makes for some really interesting things because you could also drop multiple of those. You could drop two drop only stats on an item so there's like a lot of excitement when certain bases are dropping there's obviously a lot of different base types too like um this item has movement speed as its base implicit and ward retention which is sort of like energy shield in path of exile and then on the prefixes it has tier six movement and this can't be increased but you see that it has dodge rating and health regen per second and then we can either we can deterministically upgrade the uh the dodge rating to tier 5 which is the highest tier that's craftable tier 6 and tier 7 is drop only like i said you could also try to completely randomize it it'll then turn into tier 5 but it could be something we need even more than dodge rating so now we got tier 5 poison resistance instead and it lost something called forge potential the so forge potential is how much crafting is left on the item and this is random when the item drops so sometimes you'll get a crafting base with, let's say, like six crafting potential or forging potential. That's very low and you'll barely be able to do anything with the item. But what if you drop an item that already has like really high rolls and a lot of forging potential left? That means you're very likely to be able to finish your item. So if you're not a big fan of Path of Exiles, like super RNG while crafting and having to start completely over, this is a very different take on crafting and it does feel a lot less punishing. Then here for, for prefixes, we can just look through and be like, oh, you know what? Strength, vitality. So say that I want to choose vitality because I want to be tankier. And we have Glyph of Hope. And this is um, a 25% chance that it costs no forging potential, right? Letting us craft even more. And then we have Glyph of Order. This is if it's top rolled, it'll stay top rolled because there is like, you know, something would be between 37 and 46. You wouldn't have to divine it. And then we have Glyph of Despair, and this is healing, which is similar to Fracturing in Path of Exile, but it would be basically adding a fifth stat. And these are quite rare. So normally you would be crafting with Glyph of Hope and hoping that it doesn't use um, Forging Potential. And then something that can happen as well that is a low chance, you can get a critical success. So it could go from, for example, Tier 3 Vitality to Tier 5 Vitality. Um, and it could also upgrade, you know, it could just go one on the vitality, but something else could go up one. Obviously, everything else is maxed on this, so that couldn't happen, but it could double level up the vitality. We then have different runes we can do. We can destroy an item, creating random number of apex shards. Um, you can do that. It doesn't need any forging potential. 
here we have the reroll the values of all affixes on an item within their tiers so this is a divine orb basically um here is an annulment orb from path of exile uh remove a random affix on an item so it could for example remove the health regen per second now this is when you would want to have a lot of forging potential left this is rune of discovery this is sort of like used to try to find things on items that maybe only have one stat and um Say, for example, you would use it on a lot of helmets to try to get plus skills of things that you don't have. Rune of Shaping is for rerolling the implicits, so all the things like the um, movement speed can go from 15 to 18, ward retention 10 to 15. Then we have Rune of Ascendancy, um, which turns it into a unique item, doesn't keep any of the stuff. And then I think that's the Mirror Rune, which I don't have. But uh, let's upgrade to tier 5 now. Now this item is maxed, right? So this is total level 21. And uh, that's pretty high. You can get higher. Um, and then we can like, you know, maybe it didn't turn into what we wanted. We can shard the item and you see that I get a bunch of shards here for crafting. And you'll find a lot of items. You'll keep an eye out from your filter like I showed. Things that you are looking for. Like maybe you're looking for vitality minion crit chance and you'll get a lot of those and when you finally find a base that maybe has like some of the things let's say that i found a chest that had tier 3 vitality tier 4 minion crit um and then maybe no suffixes i'd be like okay this has 50 forging potential left i'm gonna craft on this and that's how the deterministic crafting is in last epoch very cool another thing i want to show you guys is something called legendary potential so legendary potential is on unique items and it means that you can turn them into legendaries. Now a legendary potential on unique items, it's not something that every unique item has. Every unique has between zero and four legendary potential or being incredibly rare and it is rarer on the like more end game the item is. So if you are finding like a really rare sought after unique, the chance of it having legendary potential is very low. Like, for example, here, um, I think they've been nerfed, but this used to be one of the best items in the game. And getting these with legendary potential is basically impossible. And getting four legendary potential would be something like, you know, a mirror in Path of Exile. Like, incredibly rare. Here you have some common leveling gloves, and they have three legendary potential. Now, what we can do with these is really interesting. You basically get to combine them with a rare item. And if an item has four legendary potential, the entire rare item is added to the glove with every stat being guaranteed if it has three legendary potential three out of the four of the stats on the item is added it does have to have i believe it has to have an exalted it's either that you have to have a tier six or tier seven or that it just it's good obviously you would prefer that can't remember exactly which because i haven't crafted one in a while um but either way if it has three then it would choose three and even when it has one, like for example, say I found a Herald of the Scurry with one legendary potential, I would try to combine that with another helmet that has Summon Wolf and hope that it takes that one Summon Wolf. But this is gambling, right? You're hoping that it takes the set you want. And that's why four legendary potential is so good because then you try to make a perfect helmet, smash them together for like a literal super item, and then it becomes a legendary. To be able to do this process, it actually depends on what the like item level or required level of the item is. So for the really end game items, you have to do the super end game dungeon, which is incredibly hard on hardcore. To do lower level items, you can actually do like easier ones that are fairly easy, but it is a pretty hard boss fight. One thing that I really want to drive home here is a good point. It is a lot less complicated than other games. So, you know, obviously a lot of people find that Path of Exile is incredibly hard. You're constantly looking at guides and videos, etc. That's something you don't need in this game. The skill tree, you start off with like Primalist as the base class. And, you know, there's not that many things to read and look at. You aren't shoved with a huge skill tree with a few thousand nodes in your face and be like, do I have to read all of this? Whereas looking through all of these, because this is the only thing you have access to at the start, is a lot more manageable. And then after that, you have um, one of three classes that you can look at, and, and that's only available after you've played the game for a little bit. Now, there's no respec for these at the moment, like the ascendancies, um, but like normal respecs is very easy, and we'll talk about that later. But either way, it's a lot more manageable and I have only followed two guides for builds because I wanted to try something that somebody had really min -maxed. Other than that, I've just been like, 
figuring out my own thing and it's been pretty easy to do and have strong characters on hardcore that are able to get really far and that's really really fun and speaking of easy skill respects i could literally just um click here respec and every skill that you choose and you do have many uh, if I click on here in my health bar, you can see that I do have a lot of skills that I'm not using, don't have access to. Um, I can obviously just slap that in if I want to, but uh, this doesn't have like a specialization. So these are my five specialized skills, and they're the ones you're supposed to use. You start out with one, and then you unlock more as you level. And then skills go up to level 20. You can bypass that by getting plus gem level. And every skill has a minimum level. So I can't remember what my minimum level is right now. I think it's like 8, 11, or 13. Probably something around there. So if I unspec one of these, it'll reappear at that level. Or anything I spec into will reappear at that level. Um, and it'll have a massively boosted XP rate until it's back to 20. So let's say that I was at the level where my wolf was 11 and I respect, maybe I would only have a level 3 wolf, but the new thing, whatever I put in, maybe it's Ice Thorns, maybe it's Tempest Strike, we get a massively increased XP rate until I'm back similar level to my other skills. So, respects are also free, it doesn't cost anything, you literally just click respect, and you put a new skill in. Now, obviously it is scary to respect still, because you are now at a way lower level um, than the one where you were at, but it is a really good system, and feels a lot less punishing. It's not like you have to like save up and be able to afford or buy a respect and the skill point respect this does cost gold but it is very very affordable and gold in this game is used for a lot of things like gambling it is also used for buying your stash tabs that doesn't cost real money in this it costs uh gold so a lot of uses for it and as a last point it is going to have a revolutionary crafting system basically going to be that you choose one of two factions and you can swap between them freely and gear will be tagged with either the trade faction or the ssf faction now people are saying it's the ssf faction a lot but you can still play with other players and even trade with other players so what drops when when, when like you're looting it it's basically one faction that has increased drop rates but you can't trade as easily or as freely and there is one that is oh my god you can trade basically anything and these are factions that you have to like level up they'll get higher level over time like at the start of the trade faction you can't trade everything um and at the start of the drop faction you don't have the best drop rates and they improve over time the more you play it and the more tasks you do so these are really really cool for the trade faction there's going to be a bazaar a trading system and especially as an initial thing it sounds very cool very exciting and this is obviously something that's going to progress over time and we're going to see it improve so looking forward to see how that turns out so i just wanted to make this video with the six cool things that i thought were really interesting and might pull people in it's a really great game it comes out this 9th for the multiplayer release and uh you can actually buy Last Epoch through my nexus store if you would like that's you can give me money instead of gabe he already has a lot so do I, but I would like more. Um, but either way, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Thanks so much for watching. Sub if you like it. More importantly, try to die less than I do.